Our oceans are under siege. Rising temperatures, raging storms, and human activity are reshaping life beneath the waves. Among the hardest hits are coral reefs, the vibrant, living cities beneath the sea that shelter fish, buffer coastlines, and sustain millions of livelihoods. In the Caribbean, scientists and conservationists are racing against time, using cutting-edge techniques to give these ecosystems a chance. They're being driven to collapse by human-induced global warming. But in our next story, we take you beneath the waves where the future of coral reefs and the communities that depend on them is being carefully rebuilt. Human beings build cities out of concrete, steel, glass, and sometimes even carefully planned patches of greenery. While our cities rise towards the sky, coral cities grow in silence beneath the waves, holding the ocean together. Each coral is a small animal, barely visible on its own. But together, over hundreds of years, they construct coral reefs, living structures that become homes, highways, and shelter for almost all aquatic life. Fish are born within these reefs, find shelter in their shadows, and feed among their branches, as entire food chains quietly begin to form. Off the coast of Bayahibe in the Dominican Republic, some of these underwater cities are still standing, but many are slowly breaking down. Climate change is heating the oceans, weakening the very animals that hold these reefs together. And with each passing rise in temperature, these underwater cities edge closer to collapse. In this Caribbean coral heartland, a conservation team moves carefully through the water, measuring corals, recording fish, checking the health of a system under stress. What they are documenting is not just damage, but a change driven by a warming planet. The situation of the reefs in the Dominican Republic today is very sad, to be honest. Not only in the Dominican Republic, but globally. High temperatures have had a negative impact on the health of our reefs. Coral reefs are extremely sensitive to heat. When ocean temperatures rise, corals lose the algae that live inside them, algae that feed them and give them their color. Without this partnership, corals weaken, turn white, and can die. This process is known as coral bleaching. The reefs that survive are no longer continuous. They are fractured, broken into pieces. Healthy colonies are now quite far apart from each other. That separation matters because corals do not reproduce alone. Once a year, after a full moon, coral animals release eggs and sperm into the water at the same time. In healthy reefs, nearby colonies increase the chances that new life will form. In damaged reefs, distance works against them. If these two colonies are not close enough, even if both spawn, it is possible that the movement of the current will prevent the gametes from even meeting. Then fertilization will not be able to occur. When a natural process that sustained life for centuries begins to fail, conservation stops being optional. It becomes intervention. That's why assisted reproduction programs are so important now, because what used to be normal in coral reefs is probably no longer possible for many species. That's where we come in to help a little. These conservationists track spawning nights and collect eggs and sperm before ocean currents pull them apart. Inside a laboratory, those cells are carefully brought together in a process similar to in vitro fertilization, creating new coral life. Coral reefs do more than support fish. They protect people, even those who may never see them. Without reefs, coastlines erode, beaches begin to disappear, and communities become more vulnerable to floods and hurricanes. It is extremely important for us who live near the coast to be protected. Reefs have skeletons. Corals have skeletons that are extremely dense. When there are storms, they absorb the energy of the waves, which means that when the wave reaches the shore, it has almost no force left. Reefs are also nurseries for fish, supporting food systems and livelihoods far beyond the sea. For those who depend on them, the loss is already visible. And for those trying to save these reefs, the stakes are deeply personal. We live on an island. We depend entirely on coral reefs. And seeing them all disappear is really depressing. 
But inside these nurseries, the reef is no longer just a memory. It is being rebuilt slowly, carefully, and with purpose. I was born into privilege, but I sold myself as the voice of the poor. I led a revolution in the mountains and marched into Havana as a hero. I promised freedom, equality, dignity. What I built was a one-party state. I survived invasions, embargoes, and enemies, but my people survived shortages in silence. Some called me El Comandante, History calls me something else, a dictator. Who am I? <laughs>